the trail is actually under this thing of grass. It's just basically it's waist high. You just have to needle your way through it. Fortunately, I'm wearing wind and rain pants, so I'm not gonna get wet, but all this grass is covered in dew and the rain from last night. That's the field I just came out of with the cows. I don't know how often they rotate them from one field to the next, but this one looks ready to eat. I have no idea what prompts people to do this, but I think hikers are responsible. They, uh, they get bored and they might start, maybe start it as a fire ring. And people just kept adding rocks to it as they go by. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, not not recommended by the ATC, but in this case, who cares? It's pretty cool. <laughs> as it turns out, there's several of these piles. And this would not be something hikers would put enough effort in to do. They would do one collectively. But uh, not a bunch of them. It's hard to say. If this was done by trail engineers who were collecting stones to be used for steps or rerouting the trail or something like that, or if this is some kind of burial mound, I have no idea, but they're everywhere. And I've seen at least a dozen of them now, and they just keep popping up. So I have to believe it probably had something to do with how they built this trail in the early years uh, but if anybody else knows an answer to this I'd love to hear it and these are almost burial mounds mausoleums I don't know if that's possible but I don't have any other answer for it the Audie Murphy Memorial Monument. The most decorated man in World War II. Died in a plane crash right near here. And this is Memorial Day weekend. Seven hundred. Another hiker named Durden captured this video of me descending the north side of uh, the Dragon's Tooth climb. Uh, it has no audio, but it and it's kind of choppy, but I love it because it looks like a Buster Keaton film, which pretty much describes how I handle much of the AT. This is my good friend and college roommate from the Art Institute of Atlanta, Steve Owens. He picked me up at the trailhead after we'd finished Dragon's Tooth, took me to Walmart, took me to Hardee's, took me to Walgreens, took me home, I showered, got uh, my laundry done, then we had pizza and beer for the evening. Hadn't seen him since 1981. It was great seeing you again, Steve. It's right in the mountains come down like this, and you have about this much room to camp. It's beautiful, and the stream runs right through it. Awesome. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. Yeah. This is the longest hike I've ever done. I did this one. I did McCavity's Knob a couple weeks ago, but we, were, we had a baby with us. on deployment oh. so she carried the baby and baby carrying she's like 110 pounds oh my god <laughs> she was carrying like 45 pounds oh carried the entire day that's wow. crazy oh my god <laughs> <laughs> 
I just walked five miles from the last shelter to get to a spot called the monolith that promised there was room for one tent site next to it. They weren't lying. Perfect spot there to put my tent. However, If you look at the angle, this thing is at, and it's enormous. And the backside is leaning in this direction too. And all that appears to be holding it up is this one little log. That's holding it all up. I'm not putting my tent here, relying on that to keep this from falling on me. So I just walked five miles for nothing. So I gotta keep walking. I suppose I could tent under that rock. That looks stable, right? Must be built well because there's nothing holding it up. What do you think? Okay, for the final, final, final chapter in the cellulitis saga. The antibiotic they put me on was called doxycycline. When they put me on it, uh, they told me it's photosensitive. That means you should stay out of the sun. But at the time, I was, uh, it was raining, it was cold, I was covered in raincoats and gloves and long wind pants all day long, so I wasn't worried about it. Uh, the first two weeks, in fact, that I was on that medication, that's how the weather was. The second two weeks, however, was much different. It warmed up, it got sunny. I forgot the instruction about staying out of the sun. As a result, uh, my, uh, my hands, when holding the trekking poles, the way you hold a trekking pole, my hands got sunburned. But they got burnt so bad, they developed third degree burn blisters. Uh, I didn't know what was causing it. I thought it was being caused by my trekking poles. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, in this Hunger Games world I'm in, my sponsors sent me some gifts, and those gifts came in the form of a, a pediatric oncologist, his wife, a retired NICU nurse, a nurse anesthetist or an anesthesiologist, I'm not sure what she was, and a, uh, another Good Samaritan, uh, Michaela, who I talked about in one of my earlier videos. All four of them uh, took it upon themselves to uh, examine me and, and, and help diagnose what the problem was. And it was the oncologist and the anesthesi anesthesiologist who both uh, correctly identified that doxycycline is photosensitive and you should not be out here in the sun. And that's what's causing the blistering on your hands. So uh, I had to bandage them up, but I was, you know, 20 miles from anywhere and uh, had to fix something. I walked into a, uh, a store, a grocery store, and they had a hiker box. It's really just the outpost is what it's called. It's a little bitty wide spot in the road with a gas station converted into a grocery store. And, um, and their, their hiker box is full of items that hikers throw in there that they don't want to carry anymore, they don't need. And I looked, I always looked through there just to see if there's anything I could use. And there was, in fact, what looked like giant bandages. So I grabbed a handful of bandages and I threw them in my pouch. And then the next morning I went to go uh, bandage my hands up and uh, I discovered they weren't bandages, they were panty liners. That's a feminine product for you guys, okay? They were panty liners. They weren't 
bandages. But then I reasoned, well, they kind of act like bandages in a sense, so let's just trim it down and make it work. And uh, Michaela was there at the time, and she did a wonderful job of taking my scissors and trimming down the panty liners to conform to my hands, and then wrapping that around the, the blistering and then taping it on with KT tape, which you use on your legs, knees, and ankles. So uh, Michaela did, a, did a, a masterful job creating the artwork that became my hands for the next couple of days. I covered that up with gloves that I found in another hiker box and I just cut the fingers out of, and um, uh, that held the bandages on. It worked very, very well. Uh, so kudos to everyone involved. My hands are now almost completely healed. They're getting close. Uh, but it, it was it was kind of a funny funny scenario at the time. I wish I'd have had K, pink KT tape, but I was fresh out of that. That would have made it all the better. This is what it looks like when you come upon a major highway or an interstate that you have to cross or go under. Yeah. I'm not even sure where it goes. I don't see it going up on the other side, so I'm assuming I have to cross under this. Unless it goes that way. Could. Double blaze you see indicates a turn. Usually when it turns to the right, the top blaze is offset to the right or offset to the left if the turn is to the left. It doesn't always happen. Some states and some clubs do it slightly differently. Some of them just put one on top of the other and let you figure it out. And we'll soon be back in the woods away from all this noise. And another hay field. But look at that. Wouldn't you like the another little house on the prairie there? I bet it would eat out of your hands. Mm -hmm. Can someone get me something? What do they eat? <laughs> what do they eat? <coughs> Probably breakfast essentials. <laughs> you think it was like a piece of a strawberry protein bar? <laughs> Feller, oh, don't be scared. You're just the roundest little thing. If you were a softball, I'd throw you. <laughs> 